be me? Greater than 2014, cop in a small country, I'm like on a roll, have brains, be fit, and am always optimistic, life is good, have a girlfriend for six years, plan a future, decide when to ask her to marry me, things go well, and I managed to catch some criminals by myself, news to off depart, pdf, greater than 2015, we get called by a robber caught at the mall, just routine, this happens like five times a day, the guy speaks only when asked a question, like twice, is tattooed from head to toe, has some meth on him, etc. We get Chasteris T down at the place and drive him to the station. I drive, and he is cuffed on the back seat with my colleague beside him. He ducking looks at me in the rearview mirror. This lasts for, like, minutes without him looking elsewhere. Notice he whispers something to himself. What is it, duckhead? I ask, greater than no response. I get angry and shout at him. I'm putting a voodoo curse on you. Ha 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 yeah right shut up get cheat done at the station and drive him to prison. He's silent this time, but smiling, forget about this, like the day after, for a week. Nothing happens. Then things start to get bad at the job. Lose some fights on the street. Citizens complain about me. Duck some things real bad. I can't be up on top all the time, I think. Have a dream. Greater than sleep paralysis. First time ever. And I never had one after that. I can't move. A shadow looms over me then jumps into me, wake up in a cold sweat. Next day, I drive alone from some sheet, use sirens, and drive real fast too. Duck up and drive in like 100 kilometers per hour into a busy intersection. Cars from the left ram into me, airbag smashes into my left hand, with which I held the wheel. That alone saved me from breaking my spine as I wasn't using a seatbelt. Don't lose consciousness, and I'm totally fine. No injury. Reported on the radio with shaky vo smoke welling up inside the car. People are running around. Two other cars I smashed into. Everyone seems to be fine too. Except for one kid. Like eight years old. He's bleeding from his mouth. Later. He bit off part of his tongue. Take him to the ambulance that just arrived on the scene. Terrence shout at me and cry. I was later forced into a second ambulance by another patrol that arrived. The kid seems fine. I was not put off duty for this. They investigated me, with me working like always. Things at home get ducked. GF breaks up with me. Mom gets put into a madhouse for Skyzos. Dad cuts off almost all contact with me. The dog gets sick and almost dies, but pulls through somehow. I pulled an incredible amount of money into a sick dog. That and a new flat I got with GF gets me into debt. Still investigated. Start to hate my job. Start to drink heavily. Drunk by dawn. Dead by dust. People talk behind my back. Greater than 2018 now. The investigation ends with me paying a fine. Things are still going to sheet. I am, by any means. One of the worst cops in the department. Still employ somehow. Remember the ducking meth ahead today for some reason. The guy who killed Hitler. Out for a night shift begins at 20 o'clock. It is not a night of peace yet. About 2015 get sent out for a disturbance of peace by sound, which is odd since it's not yet 22 o'clock, respond anyway, when me and my partner get there. The street is littered with broken plates, every piece of plate that the guy had. He threw out the window. Loud music plays out of an open window on the first floor. Another plate falls out. We get into the house, and the city cops are already on the scene. In my country, these guys just deal with wrong parking and such. One of them is holding a camera and pointing it at the door of the guy who threw the plates. It's not the night piece yet. I tell him, but he seems stressed by the situation, so I don't press it. He says nothing, but records. I shake my head at my partner, and he laughs. I knock hard on the door, the kind of knock that anyone would open. Like 10 seconds later, the door opens, a guy stands there, smiling. He has a beard and is wearing just a shirt and slippers. His right hand is wounded and bleeding. I grip my gun but remain calm. Can we go inside? I ask politely. Of course, the guy says. Come in. Here. I just killed Hitler. WTF. JPG. The guy points to the groin. There is a pentagram painted with blood, which I guess came from the wound he had. In the middle of the pentagram is a stabbed knife reeking blood. The guy has a gush of about two centimeters on his right hand. He is smiling and optimistic, like, we both look at ourselves with my partner. I don't want to turn this into a bloodbath, so I talk him into letting us in, which he has. The music is still playing very loudly. The guy is pretty well behaved, always smiling and such. 
but obviously he is not right in the head. Turn down the music, you could cause a ruckus around the neighborhood. He goes to a PC and turns the music off. So do you take any medicaments? My partner asks. Yes, but I don't need them. Obviously, he says. Greater than yeah, obviously. We talk to him, and he calms down. Guys, check this out. I'll show you my dad, he says. Sure, of course, no problem. I say to keep him occupied. He gets to the computer that was playing the music and opens the file there. It's a picture of Barack Obama. That's my dad. The guy is white. Everyone is white in my country. Okay, sure, I say. We get the guy to come with us without using force. And he basically complies with everything we say. We call an ambulance to get him to the psych ward. I sit with him in the ambulance, just beside him. I don't even put cuffs on him. Watch out. It's a paranoid schizophrenia. Has dangerous. The paramedic says, you don't say. Gif. Doctor checks him in the psychiatric ward. You were here before. Are you taking your meds? The doctor asks. Nope. I don't need them. Obviously. Then he just keeps turning to his left hand whispering something. Who are you talking to? The doctor asks. My future girlfriend. He says. Doc looks at me. And I shrug. They put him there. And that's the last time I see him. Not really spooky. But strange somehow bordering the lines of human sanity. I think, to preface, I work in the police force in a small EU East Bloc country, and I have a few stories to share. Bugman, 2018. I am 29 years old. February, the capital of the East Bloc country, edge of town, not the outskirts, known to, to be a big ghetto of Gipsies back in 2001 when floods destroyed their natural habitat downtown. Patrol the streets in a car with a partner, greater than 2 a.m. empty streets, kind of boring. Really no action. And I remember getting sleepy just about ready to get back for a break. Suddenly get a, a direct call on the radio from the station inspector of the night. You were listening. Get back to the station. There's a weird guy here. The inspector is on the station alone at night, so sometimes people come at 2 a.m. to report their cars getting jacked, etc. Usually, these people have problems, either in their heads, alcohol, drugs, etc. Got it. I turn on the police lights and double time it back to the station to help the inspector get to the station, open the main doors, and it's dark inside. The only light I remember in the waiting room where people wait to get their turn is light from the vending machine. The guy sits there, a white, thin guy with old clothes, a bald spot on his head, and his look is kind of out there. He scratches his neck from time to time. Warning bells start ringing in my head. The guy looks at me without saying anything and I do not say anything either. Shake your head and go to the inside room to see the inspector. What's up with that guy? Yeah, the inspector shrugs. What does he want? To know. You ask him. I just let him in, but has fishy, so I leave this one to you. Inspectors are usually just the kinds of white-collar cops who just handle reports on the station and relay information to the outside patrols, etc. They also work 24-hour shifts, so this guy just doesn't have the temper to deal with some nutjobs. Go to the guy with my partner. What's the problem? He scratches behind his neck and stands up. He's really short. There's no danger in fighting him, but he still gets really bad vibes from him. I got bugs in my apartment, he says. Greater than so call an exterminator to get rid of them. You really go to a police station at 2 a.m. to report this. Greater than well, I need you to take a look. It seemed like a waste of time to me, and my partner shook his head at me. But I just got this weird feeling to check it with him. He clearly wasn't right in the head and something could be up in his flat. All right, we take a look. We go with him to our car and seat him in the backseat with my partner beside him. Go to the address, go to the apartment, he unlocks the door and waits. Get a flashlight and open the door. The flat is old style, as if from the 1950s communist country at the time, with stale, murky air, but nothing weird. Turn on the lights in the hallway and get left to what looks like a bedroom. Shine a flashlight on what looks like a bed, jumping, and the instant movement of a black tie on what looks like millions of bugs on the bed. Take three steps out of the room in terror, but you have to check it anyway. It could be a dead body or something. Turn on the lights. The bugs look like bedbugs and scatter inside a bed as the lights turn on. There is no stench of a dead body though, and the room is unkept not filthy. Just unkept with dust on everything and an overflowed garbage bin with another bug crawling out. The guy is behind me, scratching his neck, 
Greater than C. Of course I see. Check the room for foul play. Find nothing. Just bugs everywhere. Check other rooms that are surprising fine. Another bedroom that looks fine unused. Anyway, nothing for the police. Call an exterminator or something. I say this as we prepare to get out. Or use the other bedroom. I can use that one. My mother died there a few weeks ago. So you use the bug infested one instead. He scratches his neck. Nothing for the police here. Have a nice day. We get out and report to the inspector. Then resume our patrol of the streets. Greater than 4 a.m. We drive past the metro station. Butman stands there outside of the station. Nobody is around. He watches our car drive by slowly. Get to the station again and check the car. Find a few bed bugs inside where he sat. And get the car professionally cleaned. He was like a comics villain or like that guy from the mid not paranormal. But weird shit happens in our heads sometimes.